and welcome back to the podcast. As always, I'm the host, Sean Boyce. I'd like to welcome my guest to the show today, John Jonas from onlinejobs.ph. Hello, John. How are you? And thanks for being on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm doing really well. Yeah, really excited to have you on the show. Big fan of your work and especially Online Jobs PH, but we'll get into that. Before we go any further, if you would, please give us some background so that our listeners can learn more about you and how you got to be to where you are today. <laughs> so to where I am today is a, <clears throat> there's a lot. Probably a long story. <laughs> yeah, there's a long story, right? Um, <laughs> I am a husband. I'm a father of five. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I love to ride my bike. I love to ski. Um, we're an active family. Um, I don't work a ton. I've chosen to, in most of my choices, I choose to get someone else to do the work that needs to be done. And so I spend it with my family and that's kind of like a, a main, like a big part of my life is I don't spend my time working. I spend it with my family. Um, and I don't actually consider myself to be very good at business. Interesting. You know, I'm not really good at this thing. I'm just kind Do of. Do you find most out people to disagree with you on that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've never been like visionary or like see, oh, this is what's coming in the future. So we should like, that's totally not me at all. Yep. Um, just trying to solve problems as I see them. That's awesome. And obviously that's a key element. We talk about that a lot on this show. I think, I suppose that's one of the biggest, bigger challenges that some people are either prepared for or are not. Um, I, myself through product, when I first, you know, started my first software business, didn't really go according to plan. And that was, that was probably, if I had to summarize it with one element, it was not really solving the right problem. So if you're good at that, then that's uh, that's an area where you can make a lot of progress. I, I imagine. Yeah, I don't know if I'm good at it. I mean, I think sometimes I solve problems that aren't really problems, and sometimes I get lucky. Maybe just I solve a lot of problems, and every once in a while, some of them work out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to say it. Um, so where I'd love to go from here, thank you for sharing the background. Uh, it's super cool. Uh, I'd like to imagine that I stay active myself as well, too, but maybe not as much, but we'll talk more about that. Uh, if you could give us some more information about onlinejobs.ph. What is it? Who is it for? Uh, any detail there would be great for the audience to learn more. So what it is, is a job board for finding virtual workers in the Philippines. It's kind of like indeed.com, but just for the Philippines. And the reason just for the Philippines is because it's a different experience when you outsource to the Philippines than it is anywhere else in the world. And it's a more different experience when you do it the way that I kind of stumbled into instead of the way that most people want you to do it. So I can kind of, do you want me to go into the background of this and like what, ha what happened? Why? I think that would be really cool. That's kind of where I was going to go next. So yes, please do. Okay. So uh, early on in my business, this is like 2004. Um, I'm working 60 hours a week and just out of college and uh, I thought, oh yeah, this online business thing, I'll work so little and it'll work out really great and everything's automated and yay, right? Yeah, that's not, <laughs> that's not how it is. <laughs> it, that um, pain's fresh for me too, because I feel like I traveled a very similar experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I go to hire someone locally because like, I, I just, I realized like I can't do this all on my own. It just, yeah. it doesn't work. There's not enough time in the day. So I hire someone locally. The first thing they did was quit. Because they realized, oh, you're making money online? Like, this is what I was doing wasn't complicated. And they were like, oh, I can do that. So they quit. That happened four times. So <sighs> after four times, I was like, yeah, this isn't going to work for me. I'm out, right? Yep. So the next step was the only other thing that I knew, which was Elance. So Elance doesn't exist anymore. It's now Upwork. Elance and Odesk merged years ago. But this is 2004. And and so I go to Elance and I hire this guy to write articles for me and he writes 50 articles. And I was so excited because like, it was the first time in my life I had gotten stuff done by someone else yep. and he sends it to me. And then I was like, yes, I have them. I should, I, I should probably check these like to see if they're plagiarized or not. Right. They, it, he was from India. Yep. 
I get through like three of them and they're good. The fourth one plagiarized. Right. And, and then I also realized as I was doing this, like as I was doing this work that I hated doing, I realized, oh my gosh, I have 50 articles sitting here. Now I have to do something with these articles. Yep. And I hate doing this. I hate posting them in headers and resource boxes and links. And I hate that stuff. I know how to do it, but I hate it. And this giant burden just like fell on my shoulder. I thought I was just lifting this burden and I just gained this giant burden of like, oh my gosh, well, a bunch of these are plagiarized. I've already paid the dude. He's already gotten, he's already gone. So he can go work for someone else. Right. And, and that's the problem with the way that most people want you to outsource is, is go to Upwork, find a freelancer. They have reviews so you can see if someone's good or not. What they don't tell you is, you're guaranteeing yourself 100% turnover because that's how Upwork is built. And as a small business owner, like that's really hard. And for me, so hard. It just didn't work. And I was just every time I've ever used it, I've been so frustrated. Um, and then I realized, like, oh, it takes now. Now I know it takes just as much time to hire someone from Upwork as it does from from hiring someone full time or uh, from OnlineJobs.ph. It's just like a thousand times better return from online jobs. So, so I got, I was ready to quit, like not quit my business, but I was ready to like stop trying with outsourcing because it was just not, there wasn't something that worked. It was too painful. When I got a good tip, and this is late 2005, I get a good tip from someone that says, well, when you're ready to start outsourcing some of this stuff, make sure you go to the Philippines with it. I was like, huh, that's like weird, right? That's weird. That's weird advice. Because outsourcing is outsourcing and it sucks and it's painful. It's a headache. And at least that's what I thought. And I waited a couple months and I finally took the leap because I didn't, at the time I was like, you know, I have all these bad experiences and it's not really going to work. And I don't know if I can really afford someone full-time or if they can do good work. And he gave me a reference to an agency and I go to this agency and they gave me someone and it was the most liberating experience of my life um, for two weeks for two weeks because then he quit um, and said, Oh, I, I can't really do the work that you want me to do. I don't like this. Okay. That sucks. Right. For me. So I go back to the agency. No, I didn't even go back to the agency. They came to me and was like, Hey, here's your, here's your replacement. He lasted like three days and said, uh, I can't handle the office politics here. I'm like, Holy crap. This sucks. Right. <laughs> but those two weeks were amazing. Like, I, I found there's there's work that can be done, but I wanted to recruit someone on my own. So it took me a while to get to this point. I went back to the agency a few more times. And finally, I wanted to recruit someone and wanted to be like, no, I want to interview someone. I want to like go through all of yeah. the resumes that are available. And I, and I just thought maybe I can start something that will allow me to do that. Like if I build the software, then I could get maybe a couple hundred profiles of these Filipino workers and then I could recruit someone on my own. So I went back to the agency and said, hey, I want a programmer. Like, okay, here you go. And they ended up finding me this guy who is amazing. Like best, one of the best programmers I've ever met. I graduated from college in computer science. I'm a programmer. The guy's amazing, right? I didn't know this at the time. I was paying them $750 a month for him full-time working. They were paying him $250 a month. Amazing, amazing programmer making $250 a month. Now this is 2000 this is 2006. This is 2008. I started online jobs in 2009, so this is 2008. Um and so we build he builds the software for me, he builds the platform of onlinejobs.ph and we launched it and I asked the I had like six guys in the Philippines working for me. I said, "Hey, what do you guys think we could do? How do we how can we market this?" And they were like, "Oh, I can tell my friends. Oh, I can post it on my friendster, which was the social media social media at the time yep. in the Philippines. We got a couple hundred profiles in the first month. Wow. Like I I had no clue that that was going to be the case. And then employers around the world are finding this, and and I was talking about it, and yep. it just kind of blew up from there. Like I I had no awesome. intention of this being the place to find people in the Philippines, but that's kind of what it ended up being. Turned into right. I uh, 
I should say now is probably the best time as any that I myself not have, have I only traveled a similar experience as you have there with almost exactly the same. The thing, the big difference for me was I was lucky enough to find out about online jobs PH before I went to the agency model. So I essentially got to skip that step. So I'll thank you for that. <laughs> First and foremost, because I was thinking the same thing, but I didn't have the same experience, but I figured if I went down that road, that that's what was going to happen. Um, so you saved me from that. But beyond <laughs> that, I have used online jobs PH uh, extensively at this point to do almost the exact same thing uh, and continue to help build out my team. And I found some incredible people that are unbelievably sharp. And for me, the biggest, how, how it solves my challenge, because I imagine I'm probably pretty squarely in your target market, but I'll hear more from you about that in a moment, is with the turnover issue, because I was doing the same thing, whether it was Upwork or whether I hired people directly. Very recently, I've had that challenge where I've been trying to grow my product strategy agency, and it's been difficult because I've had part-timers, I've had full-timers, and the thing that's been consistent is turnover for the most part. Is uh, it's very difficult to build momentum as a small business owner, as you say, um, and that's been exactly my challenge as well. So I've been looking for a better solution for that, where I can have access to team members for a longer period of time. And the folks that I found through online jobs at PH, who are uh, living in, and currently working for me remotely in the Philippines, have been with me the longest at this point, and are have been taking on bigger and bigger roles. And it's been a total game changer, just from the perspective of like having that stability. Um, so controlling for all those other variables and factors, uh, onlinejobs.ph has been a game changer for me. So I've experienced it as well also. Thanks, man. Yeah. I mean, it's it's crazy the loyalty that the Philippines... And I, I have no idea. Crazy. Right? Like I, I go to the Philippines and I have, I have no idea that like they're super loyal. They're going to be super yeah. honest with me. They're They're hardworking. They have computers and internet access. They speak American English, not Indian English. Yeah. Like it's... It's such a big, big deal. That first, the first person that worked out from the agency still works for me today. That wow. was that was late two thousand five when I hired him. And very cool. I, I mean, it's yeah, it's twenty twenty two, and he's still working for me, and he's amazing today. Amazing, really cool. That's so cool. Um, so obviously, you know, it, what's unique on on our podcast? What I do is I talk with other product company founders, and we talk about their target market customer and problems and challenges they solve and things like that, which we're getting into now, just so happens that this time around, I'm in your target market, which is very cool also. So it makes it easier to have this conversation because I'm almost like the subject in this case, uh, which is which is a luxury that I don't typically have. So that's also cool for this conversation. Um, so from here, right, I, I'd, be, I'd be interested to hear more from you in terms of you know, where onlinejobs.ph is at at the moment. And what your what your plans are in terms of you know what either what you're doing with it now, what you're planning to do with it next, uh, you know is it in a growth mode? Like what does what does what does your plan look like for um, the product moving forward? So onlinejobs.ph is in a growth mode, but it's been in a growth mode every month since we launched it. Basically, um, it uh, it grows every month, and there's kind of nothing I can do about it. Uh, I can't. Right now, I'm not super able to help it grow. I'm certainly not able to help it slow down because there's, it's mostly word of mouth. Like it's people talking about it <laughs> because, cool. and it's it's not me or anything. You know, it's it's this amazing talent pool that I stumbled into in the Philippines. It's just so dang good there, right? Yeah. So, uh, I think we're about to pass two million Filipino profiles on the site. We, awesome. I think last month we hit 400,000 employers. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a lot, it's, it's way bigger than I ever thought it would be. Um, yep. and you know, like thousands and thousands and thousands, I mean, hundreds of thousands of, of lives changed, which is, Definitely. which is super sweet. Right. So to me right now, the, there are two things that are like, I mean, onlinejobs.ph has a bunch of stuff that we're all, we're always working on the software. We're always working to make it a better experience for employers. Um, we try and make it so that you get better applicants, fewer of them, um, because people often, very often, get too many applicants. 
Yep. Um, we want you to get better applicants, more relevant. We want you to know ahead of time what to expect because it's it's different, right? It's different than if you hire someone locally. Yep. So that's that's something we're always working on. For me right now, there's two things that are that are big, and one of them is uh, the education for employers. And so I want to I want to help employers know how to hire someone because people are hesitant. Like this is so different. It's so different than what they've experienced in the past or than what they think. At least people think it's super different. In the end, it's really not, it's not that different, right? Like it's not that different than hiring someone locally. Um, it's a lot easier. It's a lot less hassle. It's easier to find someone. It's if you do it right, it's easier to interview them. It's less commitment on every level. Um, but employers don't know that. And so they're scared because it's different. And so one of my big goals is to get education pushed further so that people, people know, oh yeah, I can do that. Yes, I can find someone great. Yes, I know how to hire them. And that was kind of the purpose of my of my one VAOA challenge, which is it's like walking you through how I find someone great, how I weed out the bad, how I find the good. I'm like 90% successful at it. So if I go to recruit someone, I'm pretty dang sure I'm going to find someone good, right? And when people follow the process, they find someone good the first time and it's it's really great, right? So that's, that's one thing. Um, the other side of it is for years, I used to offer my like... So you got to train, you got to train people in the Philippines and it goes beyond like, Oh, you bring on someone new and you have to train them. It goes beyond that with the culture of the Philippines. And so I had a whole bunch of training that I had created from my team and I made that available for people and I made it so they could buy it. Right. And so you could give my training to your people. Well, that kind of became old and stale and irrelevant. And so I stopped selling it. I don't want to sell something that's not, that's not great. And so like for the last two years, I've been working on creating new trainings but doing it better and in a more sustainable way. And so that's that's my focus moving forward is, is getting these trainings that are intended for your the person in the Philippines that you hire, but you're going to provide it to them so that they feel like they're getting training from their boss, which is a really big deal in the Philippines. Um, so it, it just makes the relationship better, faster, smoother, longer. Uh, so that's... And we're really, really close to having it being pushed live. That's exciting. So that'll be that'll be an extension essentially on the product experience. And is this going to be a productized element that people can purchase um, through the site as well too? Yes. Nice. Yeah. So it'll be a product by itself. Um, uh, and then it'll it'll probably be it'll probably be like off of online jobs. It'll be a separate website. Okay. It'll be advertised on online jobs. Uh, it'll be available through one VA away, um, but it'll be like its own product. You can buy access to all these trainings that are intended for VAs, which is a really big deal. I found one of the things I found with, with the Philippines is if you just give them a training that you bought online, mm. it's probably going to create a problem because they don't want to be the CEO and any training I've ever seen created online is intended for the CEO, basically. Not, not sure. necessarily for the CEO, but for the decision maker. Right. And the Filipinos don't want to be the decision maker, at least not in the beginning. Over time, yes. But in the beginning, they're, they're pretty scared of that. And so you give them a training you buy online and it backfires. It like does the opposite of what you thought it would. And so we've taken that and changed the way the trainings are created so that they're specifically for the VA employer relationship. Nice. Can you talk for a moment about these, where you're going with the product experience, right? Talking about the training, the elements in terms of, I've also heard you articulate, which we talk a lot about on the show, how people are trying to solve those problems today. You just gave us an example where the training they buy online doesn't really work and here's why it doesn't work. Uncovering that information, has that been a factor of your personal experience when looking to add and you know augment your team members with folks in the Philippines? Or at this point, is it feedback that you're getting from people that are the customers and clients of yours, maybe the employer organizations using online jobs, PH, like what has been the catalyst for you to ultimately determine here's where I want to go next. 
So I learned this like, I mean, 12, 15 years ago, something like that. When I people were asking me about it, and they it was really hard to find someone with any experience at all. And I just knew I had all these trainings. So I started, so I gave my trainings to a couple of friends of mine. And they were like that, they told me that's the missing piece that I needed. And so it. it was really just been my experience. And so I made my trainings available for sale and they sold like crazy. And so I, I'm getting back to that. That makes that makes a lot of sense. And uh, another question I would have for you as well, too, because we, I talk about this a lot. And in particular, more recently, I've recognized this probably over the past year or so. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, you know, 37 Signals, Basecamp, uh, their books rework. Uh, work doesn't have to be crazy, I think, is the other one. But I dove back into a lot of their material again recently, and I, I really like their philosophy to an extent. It's similar, and in particular, how I would summarize it for myself and this audience is that they're going about solving their problem, and then they're productizing solutions around their problem, which cuts out a lot of the difficulty that people underestimate when they're thinking about building product businesses. And that's you need to know the customer and their problems intimately well. You need a lot of volume of data. You need to be in their head. You need to be knowing what they're thinking, that type of stuff. And it's hard to do that. However, if you are the customer, that makes it a lot easier <laughs> because you know what the problems are, the challenges are, you've experienced them yourself. You're thinking through what a better solution to that problem might be. And that's how I'd categorize kind of what you've done here with online jobs at PH. Can you talk for a moment about that? I don't know if you've had experience previously where you tried to solve problems and challenges for someone who wasn't you. Uh, or could compare and contrast that to what you've done here. And obviously, it's been a runaway success. Um, anyway, I'd like to get your take on that. So the first business I ever started was like this real estate thing. And I was like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to generate leads and give them to realtors and they'll pay me a, a commission when they sell a house. Well, that's illegal. <laughs> At least it's illegal in the, in the realtor world, right? Yep. So like that was a complete failure. I was solving a problem that didn't exist. Right? And I talk about this a lot, like with my wife or with my kids. Yep. Yeah, you're solving a problem here that doesn't exist. And like you're making, you're inventing this problem. This isn't really a thing. Well said. That's a huge element of what we talk about. At most, if I work with from a product strategy perspective, a lot of it falls in that category. It's, I got some idea. It came from wherever, <laughs> insert magic here. Now I'm going to change the world based on this thing. And then when it, ultimately makes it to the world, the exact opposite happens. Uh, people sometimes don't even know what it is. And I've been there myself personally. Uh, that is a very different experience than everything we've talked about here. So well said. Um, and I think I would just reinforce that the strategy you've used to achieve success with onlinejobs.ph is one I would recommend others take a closer look at as well too. Uh, you know, solve a problem that you're experiencing for which you know other people are trying to solve like you as well also. Or, or, or maybe you don't know if they are, but if you have the problem, there's a really good chance that others do too. Well so said. Solve, solve your own problem. Well said. Super well said. John, thank you a ton for being here. This knowledge is super valuable for myself and our audience. Uh, two questions for you before we let you go. Are there any resources that you would share with our audience where they can go to learn more about what we talked about here uh, or anything else you might recommend? So first, I guess, I mean, my resources. Let's see. My one VAOA.com challenge is like the best way to, if you want to know to find someone, check out one VAOA.com or uh, guide to VAs.com is I answer nine, the nine most common questions I get about this uh, guide to VAs.com. Um, resources. I use Basecamp as my project management system. I love those guys at 37 signals. I don't even think they're 37 signals anymore. They're just Basecamp now. Um, right. but I love their philosophy. It's so great. Uh, in terms of like resources for you're working with someone in the Philippines, you're working with a VA, uh, my resources snag it. It's a screen capture screen recording software. It just makes your life so much easier. Uh, and that's what changed my ability from being able to manage like two to three to being able to manage 40 is, awesome. is snag it. So, so good. Um, excellent. Great recommendations. I'm familiar with Snagit. I used it forever ago. It was very popular then and it appears that it still is now. Yeah. Yeah. It's still what I use because I, I think it's the best. Yeah. Very cool. Simplicity is key, man. Um, also, I'm going to second uh, Basecamp. Love another favorite tool of mine as well, also, and the philosophy of everything that they've done. I can't 
encourage people to consume their information more, perhaps, uh, or too much, I should say. Uh, I'm recommending it always. Thanks, John. Um, last question I have for you is who should reach out to you and how can they get in touch? So that's an interesting question for me. Um, nobody should reach out to me. Um, that's so a big, like a big driving force in my life is automation. I, I want to solve a problem and I want it to be solved. I don't want to solve it again and again and again. Right. Yep. And so that's one of the reasons why guide to vas.com. Cause I've solved the problem. Like nice. you have these questions. Here's the answers. They're, they're right. It's like a four minute read to yep. answer these nine questions. Um, or you, you're ready to, you want to hire someone, you know, you're scared. Great. That's what one VAOA.com is for. If you still have other questions, then I am available through email. Uh, if you, if you want, you can get me on social media, Facebook. I don't really know how on Twitter. You can get me there too. Again, I don't really know how, but someone on my team, one of my people in the Philippines will respond to you on my, if you get me on my Facebook uh, I don't. I never log into Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. I don't have them on my phone, but my team does, and they post on my social media, um, like on my personal stuff. So you can get them there, or you can use the contact us page at onlinejobs.ph or onevaoa.com or johnjonas.com. And any none of those will come straight to me. <laughs> <laughs> but if you ask a legitimate question, everybody on my team knows. Oh yeah, I'm going to send this to John, and and I will personally respond to you. So, there we go. We figured it out. Awesome. Thank you, John. And uh, we'll link to that all of that information in the show notes as well. So, thanks for being here, John, and sharing your knowledge and experience with myself and our audience. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. Thanks for listening to this episode of Product Launch. I hope you got value out of it. I like to feature product people on my podcast because that's who I love to help. I'm a product strategist, and I can help you scale your business, and grow your profit through a product. If you'd like to learn more about how I can help you, email me at sean at nextstep.io. That's sean, S-E-A-N, at nextstep, N-X-T-S-T-E-P dot I-O. Or visit my website at nextstep.io. That's N-X-T-S-T-E-P dot I-O.